Hey everyone. So today let's let us talk about PIP one more because I got couple of response or couple of email uh, from the people from Accenture and IBM majorly. Uh, ironically, I have talked about them in the last video and I, I got to know that there are people who is currently going through this process. So let us talk about few more points. And if you just wanted to know what is PIP and how uh, people fall into this uh, situation or how you can avoid uh, the PIP and how PIP happens in all, all other companies. So definitely I would uh, ask you to uh, go through my last two videos where I have in details I have discussed about PIP. Uh, but there are a couple of questions that people are still raising. Let us uh, talk about them. Let us answer them basically. So, okay, one more point. Uh, this PIP is not a formal process. So this may vary slightly. So definitely the ideal person is your HR manager or the PIP manager. You should talk you should negotiate with them so that is the best way that you know you can know a lot of things because this this varies company to company there is no absolute uh, rules or absolute policy that company used to follow usually companies usually follow right so that is they are the ideal person but in in general uh, let us uh, like you know let me answer these four question the first question uh, most uh, like i got is what will happen if somebody deny uh, denies to sign the pip letter so what will happen if the manager or the supervisor is planning to put uh, uh, someone in PIP bucket, then they have to prepare a case. Case means they have to prepare a deck, six to seven or eight uh, pages of like you know slides of a deck, wherein they have given a proof that why he want to put uh, his resource, their resource in the PIP, or will the all screenshot escalation mails, everything they need to provide, and the HR will review. And then definitely they they'll go. They have this this they will use as a evidence for PIP. Now what will happen if someone doesn't uh, sign the PIP letter? Then the termination will kick in, and then uh, the company or HR will terminate that employee. And the consequences are really bad because usually uh, no companies, I mean big MNCs, they don't want to hire an employee got terminated due to performance issue. So if you are planning not to sign the PIP letter, then you need to basically, you know, use your uh, all. You need to check with the lawyer and all other stuff wh whether it is uh, really wise to not to sign uh, a PIP or not. Because we, I mean, usually we don't. Employee doesn't have much choice other than signing the PIP. So that is the first uh, first question. If somebody doesn't sign, then possibly um, they will be terminated. So that is one uh, due to performance ground. And the next question is, uh, but anyway, like even if uh, the HR is asking, like, you know, they want to P go for the PIP. So you can definitely negotiate. You can request them. You can also show the valid proof not to put in PIP. That can be done. But uh, even though if they are not uh, convinced, then definitely there is no choice. Uh, then the next question is what may happen uh, if someone resigned during the PIP process? So even if the PIP started or not started, if a person uh, got the last rate, last band or rating, so if they even they resign in between or before, so the resignation or that notice period doesn't comes. The, the three months or two months notice, notice period will not be imposed to that specific PIP case. So in PIP, what will happen once the PIP is done? If the if, if someone is unable to clear PIP, possibly he they have to resign in the same day, and the exit formality will be done in the same day itself. So there is a specific team who deals all these kind of a like you know PIP folks and try to clear everything with the same day, and in the evening they will get the relieving letter or the exit letter which is equivalent to a uh, uh, like you know a normal resignation so that uh, thing they will receive so even if you are in notice period and you got a pip so don't expect that you can stay three months so that trick won't work in pip cases in some cases they will usually give one week or so but usually they try to uh, complete this uh, exit procedure or exit formality within one or two days at max Okay, uh, next question is, does they pay the severance pay? So this is, again, the answer is depends. So definitely there are companies pay uh, severance pay up to three months based on their uh, policy. Policy means the notice period basically. And you try to take the severance. If they are not paying, ask them, request them to uh, get your, uh, like, you know, uh, 
the pay, one time like you know severance pay so that you can like you know somehow it can be compensated but if you don't ask there are company who actually uh, try to like you know not give this severance pay so definitely you should try and uh, definitely they will provide so uh, that again like two to three months usually and try to get the like, most most package out of it most uh, like you know amount out of it now there is a question impact of pip now i have uh, talked about about in the impact of pip so if you are able to clear then what will happen if you are staying in the company so this is the impact of the pip if you are staying in the company now what will happen if you going outside the ideal scenario nothing will happen if you are going you have a, a resignation or a relieving letter with you which is fresh that uh, nothing nothing much suspicious that will be written it's a completely fresh uh, relieving letter or the exit letter but there is certain problem that i have observed observed so first problem is uh, usually the company uh, they don't rehire the pip folks so in cognizant or accenture if you ever got a pip and due to which you have to uh, leave the job then going forward you cannot join the company back so that is for sure so that is one problem with pip you you can't expect to rehire or work again with that particular company and there is one problem with background verification so the problem is uh, suppose you are in accenture and you are going for tcs and definitely tcs will kick the background verification process now what will happen they will also provide you to uh, give your previous supervisor or the manager name mobile number and email address now if you give the pip like the person who actually put into the pip they can possibly give you a negative rating or negative thought negative talk basically with the hr they may have a negative talk that they can tell like you got the pip and all so that might be a reason maybe uh, like you know but again like those kind of reason usually like you know if you i have made a separate video you can check the background verification process there are three kind of background verification green amber and red red means you can't hire that person but usually this kind of uh, green is okay and amber is in between so usually those pip people the background verification may be amber so it's kind of a maybe that company may proceed with you or may not be so for safer side do not provide uh, like your last uh maybe supervisor manager who actually uh, given you the pip rather you give us some other employees like you know uh, whom you have a good uh, uh, good good relationship with so by by uh, like you know by this you can hire like avoid this bg problem otherwise there is no issue you can join and i saw a lot of people join a very good company from this company and uh, this is the though these two companies are really good in terms of like accenture is fortune companies ibm is one of the uh, great uh, usmncs but yes this is the uh, dark side of these two company uh, you have if you have something do let me know in the comment below thank you